how's it going so before we start the madness don't forget to like and subscribe and leave a comment tell me how much you love me tell me how much you think I suck it doesn't matter let's go sewing my so-called life is sponsored by How's it going? I'm Godless Sewing and this is the Godless Sewing Channel. So today I'm going to be exploring a trashed Singer Merit sewing machine. But also it's time. It's time for me to get my stuff together and clean my hoarding. Sometimes I try to explain how much of an astronomical hoarder I am. I own more stuff than the Maharaji. So when I clean, it takes weeks. Good grief, look at all this stuff in here. There's a funny thing that happens when you have an endless amount of space. You end up filling it with stuff. Do you know, sometimes things are priced low for a reason like this sewing machine. I bought this and another sewing machine yesterday and the other one worked quite well. But this Singer Merit was completely trashed. So when you see something at a store, it is always buyer beware. One of the reasons I buy these sewing machines is because I'm able to bring them back to life. But it's not always easy. This thing is stuck in reverse. I had to bring it up to the shop because I needed enough space to be able to completely take it apart. So after about two or three hours working on it, it still has its issues, but I got it running. So like I always say, buyer beware and pay attention to what you're buying. When you go to the store and you buy a sewing machine, first thing you want to do is make sure that it has the actual bobbin and the bobbin case underneath that holds the bobbin because sometimes those are missing. And another thing that you can do is just simply turn the machine. In the store, you can do this and you can see if it's locked in place or not. Those are just simple tips of how to not get ripped off when you're buying a sewing machine at a thrift store. Yikes, this may take a while. You know, there's an art form to hoarding. This tractor and I are the exact same age, but, but it still runs. So you're probably thinking I should throw all of it away in the dumpster but like i said earlier there is an art form to hoarding so one of my favorite sayings is i'm not a hoarder i'm a hider if you ever wondered where every jersey bad decision and vest i own goes to it's in this room so while i'm stuck in here cleaning let's go check out that sewing machine that i was ranting about earlier so this is a Singer Merit sewing machine. The reason it's named Merit is because it's named after Isaac Merritt Singer, who invented the first practical sewing machine. And a year later, he got a patent and the rest is history. And in 1858, Singer invented the first lightweight sewing machine. In 1865, Singer invented the new family sewing machine after the, the Civil War in the United States of America. But personally, I think they should have called it second place is not winning, you crybabies, but we'll move on. In 1889, Singer introduced the first practical electrical sewing machine. In 1921, Singer um, made the first portable sewing machine. In 1975, Singer made the world's first electric sewing machine. Singer is an absolute amazing company. And you know, after 171 years, and 36 million sewing machines made, I have absolutely no idea what year this machine came from. I've been looking it up for about three hours and I cannot find one iota of information. And no, I don't know what iota means. My whole point is Singer has made so many sewing machines that sometimes 
Every once in a while, this happens. This happens to match the two Brazilian sewing machines I have. So I have a feeling it's in the late 70s, 1980s era, but they stuck with their design for so long, it's hard to tell. But as always, this machine inside is made of solid steel, so it was definitely built to last. It was made in Taiwan, so it's just better built. And like I always, always say, instead of talking about it, let's go check it out. So right now is that usual time where I spike the ball, claim victory, say, oh, I'm gonna add it to the fleet, but not today. <laughs> It's been two days I've been working on this machine. It is absolutely stuck in reverse, but it still works. It was completely seized when I got it. And I also had to fix this as well. But see, if you push it in, it works, but it's going in the wrong direction. So like all of this, this machine needs lots of help, but I'm definitely gonna add it to the fleet. And it kind of looks like this other guys, and it will definitely have a home. <laughs> the one thing I will always stress is do what you love because life is too short to waste your time. And just like that, <laughs> Here comes a Kenmore 158 to save the day. I got this bad boy again in Ventura, California, which is becoming kind of my honey hole, but I don't want to go there too much. But with that being said, this machine was made in the 60s, uh, probably mid 60s, but it was made in Taiwan and it is completely metal. It weighs at least 38 pounds and it's an absolute beast. This comes from the Sears Kenmore line and it was so mass produced that I typed in half of the serial number and I got more information about this machine than I ever wanted to know. But the resale value is high and I'm probably gonna build a table for this one. So with that being said, let's see how it works. You know the spiel, welcome to the fleet. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Perfection. And I'll show you the back. <laughs> and just like that, good old Sears Kenmore saves the day. Another victory. So I know I've been all over the place today, but I hope you had a good time. Again, I probably should be on the show Hoarders instead of talking about hoarding. But with that being said, I have one hell of a closet and a giant shop where I can fix my sewing machines and have a great time. So instead of wasting your time, always be yourself, reinforce your seams, and I will definitely, definitely see you next time. Really tough. I can hear my mother call.